Accessibility can mean all sorts of different things, depending on who you ask and what the context is. On the railway, it generally means how many people can travel, what sorts of people can travel, and how convenient is their journey. Unfortunately, Britain's railways don't exactly perform well in this regard, and there are plenty of issues that face disabled passengers as they attempt to make a journey. In the early days of the railways, things were surprisingly accommodating for people with mobility issues. The sheer number of staff allowed for the transit of almost anyone or anything, and the lack of health and safety regulations meant that there were just fewer boundaries than there are today. For example, if you couldn't climb stairs to cross a footbridge, there was almost always a crossing on the level that you could make use of. However, this is obviously considered too dangerous now but adequate alternatives have not been installed in a huge number of stations. Just take a look at this GWR network map. Only the stations marked with green have step-free access to all platforms. Even if you can get to the platform though, there are other hurdles that you need to jump over. Almost literally. In Britain, we have very few low-floor trains. This means that you often have to climb quite a considerable step to get onto the vehicle. On some modern trains, like the CAF Civities, it's worse than it was before. As a result, many disabled passengers, especially those in wheelchairs, have to make use of the passenger assist service. To get assistance, you have to call up some time in advance, and then, hopefully, a member of staff will be sent out to help deploy a ramp or otherwise assist with boarding. However, that hopefully is a big one. Passenger assist often just doesn't turn up. Even if they do, there's no guarantee that the journey will be possible. There is an abundance of videos online highlighting all the issues that a disabled passenger could face. Take this one example. Doug Pawley, a wheelchair user and accessibility advocate, was trying to board this LNER Azuma. However, the only door with which a ramp could be fitted was blocked by an escalator, so he couldn't board. In the end, the train was moved forward so he could get on, but the train manager was quite resistant to doing this and took some persuading before they eventually reluctantly agreed. Even if everything goes to plan at first though, there are still plenty of problems that can happen on the journey. Communication is very poor with passenger assist. This was recently brought home to me when a relative of mine travelled down from Scotland to visit in South Wales. She requires passenger assist, and her suitcase was taken from her and put in the luggage storage space of the Voyager she was travelling on. When she had to change trains, passenger assist helped her off the train all right, but when they went to get her bag, the guard dispatched a train and pulled off. We were told that it couldn't be retrieved at any point during the journey as that could risk delaying the service, and it would have to be collected when it finally reached its terminus station on the other side of the UK. It then took several more days to get it back to a station that wasn't even the one we wanted it to be in in the first place. But, perhaps most tellingly, neither GWR nor Cross Country, the operators involved in this, were willing to take responsibility for the loss of a case. And this is something that's by no means exclusive to us. The prevailing feeling for disabled passengers on Britain's railways is that they're dependent on the goodwill of a few members of staff, with little supervision to ensure that operators are meeting their obligations, and even less consistency. Now, yes, there is the rail ombudsman, However, contacting them is a massive hassle and burden on the passenger for things that are clearly the operator's fault. Of course, things could be much better, but what would improving them look like? Let's start with passenger assist. As annoying as it is, the reservation system is probably the only way it could practically be organised, though people who do turn up without booking shouldn't be turned away if at all possible. Additionally, luggage or even wheelchairs could be stamped with QR codes they provided information about exactly where they needed to go and who they were travelling with. It would have to be very efficiently managed though to not just be an extra layer of bureaucracy, so I'm not entirely convinced. An unequivocally positive innovation would be the use of these sort of magnetic sticks they have in Belgium. There, platform staff snap them onto the side of the train, and a flashing red light at the end warns the guard that they're still on board, so shouldn't dispatch. However, perhaps the most beneficial changes will be to authority. Passenger assist personnel should be able to take charge when it comes to accessibility. In Doug Pawley's case, passenger assist should have been able to override the train manager objecting to moving the vehicle forward and get the driver to do it anyway. There should also be much stricter repercussions if an operator fails to provide its promised service. 
Not necessarily financially, it should all be one organisation after all, but maybe a meeting with tea and no biscuits for the individuals involved. Now obviously you couldn't do this without some proper training on accessibility, and all passenger facing staff, many already do, should know how to deploy ramps, deal with various disabilities, and potentially even know a few very basic British Sign Language signs. The most important transport focus recommendations should probably be made legally binding as well. Another good addition would be that of a single unified app that would do basically everything you need it to for transport in Britain. At the moment there's an eclectic mix of all sorts of different companies and organisations that you need to have an app for, but one that encompassed bike hires, car charging, bus timetables, train tickets and booking passenger assist would be fantastic. It would clear things up massively and make the network so much easier to use for everyone, but particularly the disabled. In the ideal world though, passenger assist shouldn't be necessary at all. It is possible to either raise platform heights or lower train heights and achieve level boarding. This means that anyone can roll or walk on without any assistance, and is incredibly liberating for people who would otherwise need it. Routes should obviously be assessed on a case-by-case -case basis, and there are probably a few stations where you'd have to make exceptions, like Sugarloaf for example. However, I do think it will be a very good long-term aim to introduce level boarding at all trains and stations in Britain. Exactly how this was done would depend a lot on the route. Some would see the aforementioned platform raising. You don't even need to raise the entirety of the platform length. Whilst that is desirable, you can just raise a section so that there is at least some level boarding. Others, meanwhile, would see the introduction of low-floor trains like the Stadler Flirts. Now, I do understand that there's a small but vocal group of people who viciously oppose the Stadler Flirts because level boarding isn't applicable at all stations. However, it is better to have level boarding at some stations rather than none, and even where ramps do have to be deployed, they're much smaller, quicker and easier to put down than the full-sized ones. And that's to say nothing about the alarming recent trend of multi-part ramps on new trains. Of course though, it's no good having level boarding between platform and train if you can't even get to the platform. As with level boarding, there should be long-term, legally binding targets to eventually require step-free access to all British stations. Again, this would require a few select exemptions, but nonetheless, only a very small number of stations are completely impossible to modify. If full stem free access would require more lifts on footbridges and pathways down to roads, then so be it. We certainly can do it, it might cost a little, but it's nothing we can't afford. We've done similar things before. As recently as 2020, new legislation came into action that required all trains to be fitted with accessible toilets, or none. Did the world collapse or train operators go bankrupt? No. New techniques were developed to easily and cheaply retrofit toilets to existing trains. It was not impossible at all. We shouldn't be too afraid of ambitious targets. If we need to do something to make the railway better, then we should do it. On that note, thank you for watching, and I would advise you to wait around a few minutes to hear a very special announcement. A big thank you there to Julie Berry, who recorded the announcement, and indeed records the announcements for many train operators across the UK, and to Wysat for organising this. He's from the Discord server. Thank you for watching GW Villager. Please like, subscribe, and share. Thank you. Please also join our Discord server. A link to it will be in the description down below.